on this rather grim Sydney day, this week we've got the Audi Q3 Sportback. And with this Audi Q3 Sportback, come a few interesting facts. First of all, let me tell you about what it's got in it. This is the 35 TFSI. So the previous ones I've had were the 40s, 45s for the coupe and so forth. Now, what you get in the lower models is still pretty impressive. It's got a 1.4 four-cylinder turbo engine with a six-speed S-tronic transmission. It has 110 kilowatts and 250 newton meters. Zero to 100 is 9.3 seconds and it uses 7.3 liters per 100 kilometers. It's got 19-inch wheels, electric seats for the driver and front passenger with four-way electric lumbar support and Audi presets with autonomous emergency braking, adaptive cruise assist, emergency assist, active lane assist, and a parking system with front and rear sensors and a rear view camera. The headlights are adaptive LEDs and the rear indicators flash gracefully in the direction that you're turning. Inside it's got the MMI Navigation Plus with 10.1 inch touchscreen and a virtual cockpit with 10.25 inch display. There's Audi Connect Plus navigation and infotainment services. And while Android Auto still requires a cable, the Apple CarPlay is wireless. So this is where things get a little bit different. It differs from the other Q3s we've shown you, the Q3 and the RS Q3. It has the same front. You'd be forgiven from there forward for thinking that it's just a normal old Q3. But then you look backwards and there's this lovely powerful haunch and this graceful dip. Now this coupe line I think looks smashing. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually prefer this to the other Q3. It's the only one of these coupe style SUVs that I really, really like. It's 56,400 and apparently this Tango Red is a no cost option. It's supposed to be metallic, but it doesn't look metallic to me. It's impressive, isn't it? What's it like on the road? Inside, everything is pretty much as it was in those other cars that we showed you. The electric brake releases itself once you put it into gear. There are drive modes too, of course. And that 1.4 engine may seem a little tame, but it's got plenty of poke. It never feels like it's straining. And like all Volkswagen Group cars, the engine has a, a smoothness about it, the mechanics. The transmission is incredibly snappy and smooth and with some of those drive modes of course the transmission does change and the throttle changes with it but this week I purposely left it in automatic and let it do its own thing the one thing I did notice was that without the quattro so this is just front wheel drive there are some times when it really scrambled for traction and I don't think you'd be able to drive this without traction control in the wet, you would spend your whole time spinning the front wheels. And if that zero to a hundred times seems a bit leisurely, it doesn't actually feel it. It feels nippy. And I think that that's the thing that we need to understand. Not everybody wants to go around corners like they've entered a bald trans warp conduit. Sometimes you just want to do what I'm doing. And that is just beetle along at 50, admittedly in a 60 zone, and enjoy yourself and smell the roses. But we do have touch control lights. Whoops, but I can get them. The dash is beautiful and the bits that look like metal are metal. And this little sign here, which in the Quattro model says Quattro, just has the Audi symbol and that lights up at night. Thank you very much. Along with that ambient lighting package, there's also little lights in the doors. But apart from that, you honestly don't know, certainly at this speed, that you're not driving the top model Quattro. The steering is still absolutely delicious, as it is in all VW Group cars. Fuel consumption is okay too. This car has seat heating and twin zone climate control. 
like I said, it's exactly like the Q3s I showed you previously, but this is the Sportback. The seats still go down in a 40-40-20 split, so you can put the middle bit down if you've got a set of skis or something. The sound from the sound system is good. The touch interface is incredibly easy to work. I've showed you that before on the other Q3, so I'm not going to bother doing it again. I've still got my blind spot monitoring, still got lane centering, still got emergency brake assist, still got autonomous emergency braking. One thing I would like to demonstrate for you while we're here, and a lot of new cars have this, so this isn't unique, but I think it's just an interesting feature. Put the window down a little way. Now, let's just say, it's a little bit noisy with that open, that you've gotten your fingers caught in the window. Did you see that? I'll show you again. The window will stop and then retract to a safe level, which I think is good. Now, just then, a message came in. So listen to this. Hey Siri, read messages. I wanted to reply I could have and that was a message from Rob so let me demonstrate the steering and this is just in normal mode remember round here like so easy easy and the grip is extraordinary really is just sensational it'd be nice to have paddle shifters at moments like these I'd whack it back a cog or two but this is very easy and at all stages the Audi feels composed calm gentle so to round up Q3 Sportback in the 35 TFSI version is comfortable at 56k plus it's not the cheapest car around, but then you do get a lot of car for your money. It's supremely comfortable. I think it looks spectacular apart from a little bit of a paunch, which I don't think is all that bad. On a car, on a person, not so much. The ride is lovely. It's firm, there's no doubt about it, but it's lovely. The cabin is fairly quiet, you can't hear much in the way of road noise, even with these honking great 19 inch wheels, which for a car this small is really saying something. That's it this week for the Audi Q3 35 TFSI Sportback. But if you've enjoyed the film, don't forget as always, hit like and leave a comment. But most of all, just there to subscribe.